In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for this day. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon us in our conversation um, as we entrust ourselves, our desires, especially to grow, um, to understand and grow in the interior life. We ask this as we ask all things through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Okay, um, to start off, can you turn to section 61, which would be page... 116. 118. Well, oh, what? 63. Yeah, we will see. get to 63. Um, well, that's where I was. <laughs> so section 61, and it would be one, two, three full paragraphs down. This is super, super, super important. And this is part of the reason that we're here. Um, and that she says... One, two lines down. I do not play favorites. Who's speaking here? God, God the Son, Father, 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 right? God the Father, right? I do not play favorites, but I do respect holy desire. And I show, are you, are you guys finding it? It's the third. Yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah, it's the third. You said fourth. Oh, sorry, third. third. <laughs> Okay, I need, some, I need, you're just checking for a I, week, aren't you? <laughs> just drink some coffee. <laughs> okay, third paragraph down. I do not play favorites, but I do respect holy desire, and I show myself in souls in proportion to the perfection with which they seek me. Okay, I cannot. Okay, we could we could spend a lot of time talking about the importance of this, and like as a principle and foundation of the spiritual life, like like a core truth, a non-negotiable, a um, core value, like the seeking um, with desire. So there's a proportionality um, that occurs in our relationship with God. It's not just God loves everybody and everybody gets the ribbon, right? Everybody gets first place. And, and what's being highlighted here is several things. One is like human, the gift of human freedom. The gift of and f you, human freedom that we are agents of our own actions with our intellect and will. We freely choose. This is different from, you know, you think about um, different uh, theologies uh, in regards to the relationship between freedom and grace. Um, some theologies holding that everything is grace and that freedom is completely corrupt it's no longer we're no longer it's no longer possible for us to um, everything that we do um, is disordered right that we don't have any basically overemphasizing grace leads to undermining the role of freedom so I know we talk about grace law, but we have to be careful about this and there's there's a there's been a movement over the last 30, 40 years to get, get rid of any kind of language that addresses as, as associated with merit. Now, just as you can overemphasize grace, what God does, <laughs> so you can overemphasize merit, what we do. Okay. It, I, in my mind, the devil doesn't care which side you go. <laughs> I mean, the, the word, I mean, because basically, um, when it, when it comes to, if I overemphasize grace, um, then I, I can follow the maxim of the Augustinian priest, former priest, Martin Luther, um, who said that sin and sin boldly doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Everything is grace. You can't do anything. Um, but then we have, um, and we, we, we've, as far as the Catholic Church, our heir has been to fall into um, overemphasize on merit and works. Um, that's not our situation in, in, right now. That's not our that's not our situation over the last forty years. But there were eras that was extremely that was the case. And I think you could look at it during the time of the Protestant Reformation. Um, you know, fifteen nineteen, fifteen twenty one, when um, with Luther, you know, began to become public. Um, is that the heavy emphasis on indulgences, mm -hmm. really it has to do with merit. Mm -hmm. Like, 
and um, and then a really corrupt form of merit, mm -hmm. <laughs> a very corrupt form of merit. Um, so <laughs> there was actually, in, um, you just it was amount of money that you would pay. So you didn't even have to have a strong morality, right? So it can just, but then the the answer is not okay. Throw the baby out with the bathwater because when you do that, you th you you remove the gift of freedom, right? We're not. Um, what our teaching is in regards to original sin is that our free will is sick. It's not dead. It's not, um, it, it's, we're still capable that we could, uh, of our own without grace, that we are able to abstain from evil in most cases, especially when it's clearly contrary to reason. Okay. Um, but we cannot go for too long without mortal sin, without grace. Okay. So we can't, without grace, we can't, I mean, we will commit mortal sin, but um, not everything that we do is going to be mortal sin in most cases, especially when it's clearly contrary to reason. So like, what's a place, what's a situation that's clearly contrary to reason? Sorry, I blanked. There. Oh, sorry. Say that one again. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about distraction. That's what I do. When, that's what I do when I'm talking. I oh my myself God. is talking. I get. I don't. You know, like I'm not even paying attention to what I'm saying. So, okay. Like the Ten Commandments. You know, you know what the Ten Commandments are. So if you sin against those, that's the prime example that that's given by Saint Thomas Aquinas as far as just like natural law things. It's like murder, mm -hmm. yeah. right? But isn't it kind of interesting in, in our day and age? It's like what we used to see would be like. Uh, clearly contrary to reason now it's 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 the opposite like no this is a no this is a good thing <laughs> I mean like you know what I say like I think we you know, know what we talk about right like mm -hmm. in in areas of sexuality gender issues um, what marriage is what marriage is <laughs> like um, and so now we're at the point with some of these issues is like what was clearly contrary to reason for the longest time has become like, if you take that position, you're clearly contrary to reason. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Well, like, good is, I mean, evil is good now mm -hmm. and good. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And so, I, I'm just to digress here, but the point, the point is that, um, you know, God created, created human beings in his image and that being in his image is, means that we, um, the greatest thing is that we have the freedom, we are our own proper agents of action, right? He, he gives us all the power to be able to be free agents, like we can freely choose. Um, <clears throat> but we do need grace. Um, but the point of this, this, this paragraph is like, I don't play favorites. <laughs> okay, so, oh, the, you know, this, this person's got, here's, here's a favorite, you know, Oh, this person's called to be a religious or and so that's the highest call and so you know that's God's favorite um, God doesn't play favorites that's the way it was in the 50s yeah the religious life was higher than the lay life mm -hmm. and it, it was mm -hmm. and I, I would say Angela like um, we would we would still recognize like some sort of a hierarchy of call we don't talk about that at all anymore but it was it was another thing that got just completely distorted like who's better like yeah. and it, I think that fell into like it, it became, was implied that God played favorites <laughs> right um, so does that also apply and I can't remember where I heard this mm -hmm. does that also apply in heaven <laughs> what's that like there's no um, higher merit you know, and because um, I heard there was. So our, our theology is is basically, I mean, like you're, um, you will be completely happy in heaven, but your capacity for happiness is different according to the way you have used your freedom. So I can have a, I, I can, I can have a nimble, uh, nimble. Thimble. Thimble. <laughs> a nimble thimble, <laughs> right? And if that's my where my where my charity level is, right? If that's that's how I die. Um, so I don't expand after I die. We can expand the thimble. Um, I might be a, a tall, or a grande, or a vente size. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, everybody will be completely happy, but your capacity for happiness is different. 
Does that make yeah. sense? It does make sense. It's just hard to grasp. Right. And I think you know? that, and I think what we want to be attentive to is like, um, it's all of this is still completely beyond our imagining, right? Well, yeah. So, and solution. even as we're talking about like the stages of the spiritual life, it's like, this is to give us indicators. So like, we've got a direction in a sense of, that do we have absolute knowledge? Not, no. not even close, yeah. right? But let's not say that, re <laughs> that there's, a, there's an order and reason in the universe, like, and that, that order and reason is, co is called the Logos, mm -hmm. who is the word Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he is re basically re reason itself. <laughs> Um, and so, um, all things were made through him mm -hmm. and in him. So like, um, we don't, we can't, we don't, our re yeah. So, yeah. Um, so yes, we could, um, this is what we can kind of unravel with our theology. Um, but we have to always have to be careful to extremes and exaggerations. Um, mm -hmm. and in this, so like, this means it's important that I respect holy desire. Holy desire simply means, okay. Um. Oh no. Oh, the green one. Here, here. Oh, you got one? Here. There's one. Here, we got it. She got a big one. Oh, oh. <laughs> I always keep one in this box in case I'm not here, okay? In my camera. Yeah. When she's using the word holy desire, holy, it means to the object of our desire. So it means to God. That's we're talking about holy. Okay, to God. And when she says, um, and she when she's speaking about desire, she's speaking about um, our the, the area where we have freedom, our choice. Okay, this is what I want. Hopefully, it's connected to affectivity because she talks about in in section sixty three here about how um, the we climb through the. Um, affection of our feet our feet our feet take us where we want to go right mm -hmm. that's how important the affections are so it's like i can't it's not just raw willpower you got to have that loving feeling you need me to <laughs> sing that for you no okay, okay. you're good <laughs> I don't know. okay so this this has now we could go back and, and talk about like um does this is this initiated from ourselves no we have the gift of faith hope and charity, okay? So those are poured into us in God, uh, into us by God, right? And they, now that our, our will and our, our mind, our intellect, they have a supernatural end now. They have a new power, right? And, um, and they, we are now inclined towards God. Um, but it never compromises our freedom in, in, sense, in the sense of like we're inclined, but I can always, with my free will, choose or reject okay so we're kind of working out the relationship between nature and grace but what she she's talking about here is holy desire and so god respects holy desire he respects your freedom and so and so i here's the proportionality i show myself in proportion to the perfection with which they see me the perfection how about we use the word completeness the completeness so I'm all in. And so to that degree, God's gonna show himself to me. Um, the, you might capture this, uh, Proverbs two, four through five. When it comes to wisdom for seeking God, if you seek her like money, <laughs> if you seek her like silver, Proverbs two, four through five. I love, I mean, that, that image is great, right? If you see, you, cause we we're all familiar maybe that with that in our hearts and in the United States, a capitalistic world, right? If you seek her like money <laughs> and what, it, okay, let's talk about that for a second. Like what it, give me some characteristics of seeking it like money. What is it to seek like money? People that you know, who are that, that are seekers of money driven. driven by it, right? Mm -hmm. Driven, uh huh. They work nonstop to get it. They work nonstop to get it, right? Yeah. 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 They're competitive. What? Competitive. They're competitive for it, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, like, 
they'll throw away, I mean, to the extreme, they'll throw away friendships. Throw people under the right. Yeah. yeah. Elon Musk would be. <laughs> yeah. Three billion yeah. isn't enough. If they make 2.9 billion next year, they consider it a disaster. How much is enough? Yeah. There is yeah. <laughs> Just a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're never satisfied. So it's never satisfied. Here's one thing, you, you think about it all the time. Okay, so oh, yeah. we can use that. It, we're not here to scourge that, you know, that, that movement. What if I take that and I apply it to myself? Cool, okay? I think about this with farmers and just seeing like, <clears throat> and growing up on the farm and going to mass at Holy Redeemer Tampa and it's just farm families when I'm growing up. And I, <laughs> with my dad, I guarantee like, Half of the time he was at Mass, probably, he's thinking about farming. <laughs> now, this is not not to, like, okay, this is not to be judgmental. The idea here is, like, what you're passionate about, right? That And you apply that to pursuing God. That's the proportion, to the proportion that I do that, um, I'm going to show myself through the way that they seek me. I, I, for myself, I believe like the, the hinge of my, like, I was always, I grew up in a very Catholic family and I can't ever remember missing mass on a Sunday. That doesn't mean I wasn't without sin. Of course I was, I had plenty, but I was, grew up in a strong Catholic family. And, but like where it really took hold for me is, um, um, being on the farm and then being in a small school, one a school. And so you could be involved in everything. I was just passionate about sports. So like, um, I, like. Um, obnoxiously so, and but we didn't have camps and any kind of stuff. So you, I just had to train myself, um, and my dad wouldn't spend money for anything like that anyway. So, uh, <laughs> and uh, it, it came to me when I was right about seventeen years old, just like the thought, like, and I didn't think about it as like something that came from God at that moment, um, but I know that it was. It's like, and it stayed with me. What if you applied yourself to your spiritual life like you're applying yourself to sports? And then that's been my mode of operating since 17. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting, there's a phrase came to me a while back when we were talking about the scorpion, do you mm -hmm. remember in the yeah, yeah. tale? And this phrase about um, being at the beck and call, and I thought, I'm at the beck and call of my children, mm -hmm. up mm -hmm. a large, and then I just heard this voice say, suppose you were at the beck and call of God. Oh, and yeah. I, thought, <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it. I down, and I thought, oh, okay. <laughs> it just hit me. Yes. Beck and call of God, not beck and call of your children. <laughs> That's an incredible truth, and like I think, really, for mo probably for a lot of us, like um, I think the, I would imagine that the Lord speaks to most of us as far as conversion goes. It's like our own experience of pursuing the world some, and maybe natural goods, and then then we have experience of what it means to be all in for something. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I've got a measure and rule of like apply that to my relationship with God. And so, <clears throat> and yeah, so just uh, spending some, some time reflecting upon this, 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 a truth, this truth about our approach to God um, can be incredibly powerful. So, okay, um, let's go to, sixty-three, section 63. Okay, now you have seen, the first paragraph, now you have seen the, the superb state of those who are have attained the love of friendship. Okay, we got it. Let's go back again quickly. What were the what were the different types of love? Mercenary. Mercenary, slavish. And what else? Servant. Faithful servant, right? Then? Friendship. Friendship. She's going to say in section three, finally give us some clarity here, because like sometimes she'll talk about filial relationship, then friendship. Um, it's from friendship, then you go to filial. Um. <clears throat> and she said many times that there's no shortcut. You've got to trek through all of these. 
to, to some degree, you've got the directory row. Um, this is a, another misnomer, uh, misnomer, false path, um, mistake. I think we've like um, we've been in times where we this this was the driver, so hell and brimstone um, driven, and then that's the only path, that's the that that's what relationship with God is, and so my whole image of God and who I am with God is about based upon fear of hell. I mean, because that's what mercenary is like. You're driven by fear of hell. <clears throat> so that, that's not, and, you, and we do have to go through that, but like, <clears throat> um, so this was so overemphasized. So it was certainly like this for my dad, like what he was formed in. And so like, that's a message that, that we got a lot at home. Um, and uh, the problem with that, then if, if that, instead of like a step on the way, it becomes the way, um, then I never, move, I never move through to what God is ultimately calling us, calling me to. And remember she said also like all three of these stages can be in us at the same time. So there's some parts of our hearts. I, and I would, I would consider this in the area of um, confession, like, People, I know, I know people who are definitely in friendship stage, but the way that they confess some of their sins and like the things that they say um, are really a okay. I'm friends with God, but God's going to be um, um, this this fierce judge, and I'm uh, I may be going to hell. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. But I think that comes out of that thing you were talking about 40 years ago. I mean, yeah. it was. Mm -hmm. You had to work your way to heaven. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's mm -hmm. really how we grew up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I'd be curious with younger people if that if they even had that concept. I I think no. I definitely think like I think we went through the '80s where you know there were a lot of balloons and catechesis and <laughs> just feeling good. And um, I just think that, well, that was a res re response to this. So it's a basically then I can just start as a friend with God. Well, no, that doesn't work. No, there. Um, think about go back to John fifteen fifteen. Another like passage or verse that we need to have be very familiar with. I no longer call you servants. Jesus did not start with the apostles as friends. He says, "I no longer call you servants. I call you friends." Right. So um, now and then for us, this work is that we need to. Um, this is what we aspire to in the freedom of sons and daughters. Mm -hmm. And so we need to have, we need to keep going back and have a familiarity with the characteristics and markers of these different areas. Because what she wants us to do then is that, <clears throat> paragraph, or be section 63, paragraph five, I got it right. Two, three, four, five. Yep. To attain charity, friendship with God, this is what St. Augustine says, friendship with God is charity. So what is charity? It is friendship with God. So that's the kind of love it is. It's friendship love. All right. So how do we attain to, to attain charity? You must dwell constantly in the cell of self-knowledge. You must dwell constantly in the cell of self-knowledge. That's and that means that means what? Um, sifting through and discerning kind of the movements of the heart and the desires of the heart. And for and like, is this a movement or a desire that's connected to mercenary love? Oh, does she say does she say that we should be like be paying attention? Absolutely, she she, she does here. Um, Go to now, turn back to section 60, paragraph 2. Section 60. Paragraph 2 is on page 114. Oh, sorry. Two paragraphs from the bottom. So, like the second paragraph from the end. Um, oh, on 60. section 60. So, it'd be on page 115. 
Can you just read it? Yep, and I'll read it for you. Okay. Remember, you must dwell constantly in the cell of self-knowledge. So, it, it, you're within your tent. <laughs> and what do you do? You, um, this is halfway down or a little bit more than halfway down. They can sit in judgment on themselves. So, we, we sit in the cell of self-knowledge in judgment of ourselves. What does that mean in judgment of ourselves? I mean, it's like we're becoming aware, understanding, and, and making a judgment on the different desires that are going on in our heart, the different movements in our heart, the different thoughts the different thoughts that are going on, um, the train of thoughts that are going on. And so she says, so that motives of slavish fear and mercenary love do not cross their hearts without being corrected in the light of most holy faith. If they act in this way, it will please me so much that they will come to the love of friendship. So they can sit in judgment on themselves to so we, we sit in the cell of self-knowledge. We're, we're aware and understand what's going on. So motives of slavish love. So what does that mean? Or motives of slavish fear. What does that mean? Motives of slavish fear. Can anybody say the act of contrition or it, um, it, for the sacrament of reconciliation? Can you, can you recite it? Oh my God, I'm heartily sorry for having offended thee, and I detest all my sins because of thy just punishments. Oh. Yeah. Because of the fear of hell, the loss of heaven and the fear of hell. Either yeah. way. Uh, okay, keep, okay, go ahead and say it again. <laughs> I won't stop you. My God, I'm heartily sorry for having offended thee, and I detest all my sins because of the loss of heaven and the fear of hell. But most of all, because they offend thee, my God, who art all good and deserving of all my love. I firmly resolve with the help of thy grace to sin no more and to avoid the near occasions of sin. Okay, so um, not because of the uh, fear of um, judgment and hell, but most of all, because they yeah. offend you, my God. So like in the act of contrition, we're actually naming, um, um, that there's a clause in there that um, expresses mercenary motive the motive of mercenary love fear mm -hmm. love now i'm i'm not sorry merely because i'm 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 well i'm gonna go to hell slavish fear right not merely because but because it offends you my god right does that make sense mm -hmm. okay so she says <clears throat> that mercenary of the these motives so basically slavish fear that I'm gonna to go to hell. That's my motivation. Do not cross their hearts without. Okay, important here. It's the goal is not that these motives don't cross our heart. They're gonna come into our mind, in our hearts. Like automatic thoughts. The fear of hell, um, the afterlife, the harsh, the, the judgment of God. Um, those are going to go, those are going to cross our hearts. The goal is not to suppress those. No, they're going to cross our hearts. Um, and then as we are in the cell of self-knowledge, we correct them in the light of most holy faith. We correct them. We give them a, those thoughts a course correction. <laughs> so, so, yeah, go ahead. Does that mean if I have filial love that the fear of hell still comes into my mind, mm -hmm. but that I should immediately think and trust in God, mm -hmm. yeah, that he is my savior. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, I've been wanting to ask that question for the last 10 minutes. <laughs> yes, and th just think about this. At the end of her life, St. Therese of Lisieux um, had um, serious trials about um, the existence of an a, even an afterlife i mean so like um so that would be like that would be leading her into <laughs> thoughts and, and feelings of you know a mercenary relationship with god so um so like how do you do this then practically 
be co being corrected in the light of most holy faith. Well, I can't just be on automatic thought, I'm on, you know, automatic, yeah, thoughts all the time. I have to like um, become aware of my the thoughts that are passing. In my, I'm in my cell of self knowledge, uh, and so where where are they trending? What's their direction? Can I? And this is why journaling can be kind of can be helpful because you can just you write it down, you put it on a piece of paper, right? I mean, a lot of people don't like journaling, but there's, there's something something good about um, naming it. You know, that was a big thing in like with the Desert Fathers is like naming the demon. You know, was half the battle. Um, so it's like, okay, I'm I'm diagnosing it, I'm recognizing it, and then, um, so I'm I'm seeing this. It's like this motivation is is born of fear. Of punishment um, and I need to do what bring this into the light of most holy faith so what would be considerations that you would have like in the light of faith what might be some considerations believing the words of Christ mm -hmm. so like what what could be some lines of scripture that you would use in my father's house, there are many mansions. Mm -hmm. If there were not, I would have told you so. Yeah. And I'm going to prepare a place for you. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if you love me, keep my commandments. Mm -hmm. Yep. Anybody else have some lines of scripture that would, could come to you? That would be a way for you to consider when, when these desires, when these motives of mercenary or slavish love come in? It's just be not afraid. Be not afraid. Be not afraid. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, how about the great imagery we've been having the, the last two weeks about the Good Shepherd? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's why. I like uh, one of the reason, another reason I like kind of use the Good Shepherd is like they like introduce the Good Shepherd immediately into the mindset as a kid. It's not to skip over this. Like mm -hmm. there's gonna we we're, we're gonna have to go through this. But what if I like. What if I have clarity about like the first truth of who God is as the shepherd versus the um, you know horrific judge? Well, you have the image of the wolves with the good shepherd. Yeah. So you're bringing in the mercenary image there mm -hmm. for children, particularly. They yeah. understand that concept. Oh yeah. You know the bad guy. Right. The good guy. They do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And grace is, grace is always at work within us, inclining us to that. So it's not like it, we're don't we don't want to start off with like a belief that it's what I'm conjuring up. I'm going to believe this positive think the power of positive thinking. No, mm -hmm. like there's there's a living principle seed that's incessantly inclining us. <laughs> Um, w without compromising our freedom um, in this direction towards filial love, towards a filial relationship with God. And we have probably those who are, uh, many of us who are describing you, we have fierce, bad habits of thought and feeling in this area. Fierce. And so like, one of the, so when it comes to, uh, so it, it means it's automatic when it, once it gets its trigger, like it's, that, that's where the thoughts and the feelings are gonna go. So if I wanna replace habits of thought, I need to like, <clears throat> just on the practical <coughs> level, what's, <coughs> th these are the steps you could use. Um, like you're, you're trying to create virtue in your thoughts, like, and virtuous meaning rightly ordered, um, moving towards uh, sonship and, and, and that kind of intimacy. First of all, identify the behavior all right, that you want to perform and the, and the habit that will produce it. Okay, so the behavior that, what's the behavior here that you want to perform? 
what I'm looking to, the behavior is behavior, the thoughts that reflect friendship love. Thoughts that reflect filial love. So that's the direction that I want to go. That's the behavior. How do you, how do you acquire this? Be, how do you acquire a habit where it's like this becomes my mode of operating? This is the way I think. This is the way I'm seeing things. A habit is acquired through the exercise of acts. <laughs> okay. What's that? Practice. Practice. Yep. Through the exercise of acts, so that much time <laughs> and experience is required for its generation. So it takes a long time. That's why like most of us are dealing with habits from our youth. <laughs> now we've grown, but like our thought habits, the way we relate to people, um, no, because we're souls and our experiences, especially strong experiences, form impressions into the different powers of the soul, like my thoughts, my feelings, my identity, um, different appetites, sexuality, like um, if I've been formed in a, in a poor way and, and seen from a, a young age to look at women as objects, do you think that that goes away? Oh no, <laughs> right? So it, it takes a lot of work, right? But that's what grace is. Grace is respecting our freedom and that change is possible. So I need to know that, okay, so we got like, what's the behavior that I want to perform? Like thoughts and attitudes that are that reflect friendship with God and reflect filial love all right the second thing is like I need to identify something that will give me a sense of reward for performing that behavior remember I talked about this all the time you've got to have a, it can't just be duty driven you have to have clarity about what the goal is the goal drives us <laughs> the the final end is <laughs> the final cause which is what we're after is uh, defines the formal cause, which is like the reason for our acting. <laughs> so it has to be something that'll give you a sense of reward. Why, why do you want this? You've got to be able, and you got to you, you got to be able to name it in a personal way, like for you that it really resonates for you, that it's attractive for you. So, and yeah, so um, can, can can we name some? Name some things that would give us a sense of reward for going, being intentional by going in this direction. I think Thanks. that friendship has consolation with it. That if you mm -hmm. are after mm -hmm. a friendship, mm -hmm. that you do feel consolation. Mm -hmm. And that's the payoff. Yeah. Is, you know, is it the that, that's a good point. I think what you're, you're also kind of bringing into is like, we're trying, I'm taking a natural experience of friendship um, and then, okay, that's, this is what friendship is. And we're saying that we can have this at the spiritual level. So like, I go back to the <clears throat> very positive experiences of, of natural friendship, right? Um, and what do I like about that? that um, there's a, there's an intimacy, there's a savor there. There's like, uh, life, right? Okay. So like, yeah. And, um, that it's very satisfying, right? That, that like, the friendship is the reward itself. Okay, so that's what I want. I don't know what that would look, feel like with God necessarily, right? But like, by faith, our, my faith teaches that's what God wants with me. So in spirit and truth, I pursue friendship with God. In spirit and truth, that means um, beyond anything that can be seen. <laughs> in truth, this, it is. Mm -hmm. How do you know? By faith. Okay, so like, um, what, uh, there, and when it comes to rewards, so it could be from the activity itself, you just enjoy the activity. Um, so I've used this example a million times that Father Seth loves, he went out for like a 12 or 15 mile run this morning. Yeah, he, he just loves to run. So that's what we, in an analogous way, that's what we say when you have a virtue, you just love the activity itself. You enjoy it. Like um, most people, um, after they get out of high school, they exercise because of their external rewards, fitness, 
right? Or can be more productive, but they don't, there's a lot of like not enjoying the activity of exercise. <laughs> Does that make sense? Um, so what I'm saying here, until you have the habit like of thinking and having the attitude of, of this, it sounds really good. It sounds really good to me to be like, wow, I can understand what Father Seth is saying. It's like, I would, or like his experience of running and just enjoying the running. Mm -hmm. And I want that for myself. <clears throat> I desire that. Do I, because I desire, do I have it? Mm -hmm. No, it's going to take a lot. Uh, um, habit or virtue comes about through the exercise of acts so that time, much time and experience are necessary for its generation. So it's not going to come overnight. And here's the thing. In the, when you have a contrary habit, like this is the way I'm thinking, this is going to feel very foreign to you. It's not going to like, yeah. I mean, a lot of people talk about this. Like, I know um, that God loves me, but I don't feel like that at all. Well, it's, they haven't they haven't had they haven't been transformed in, interiorly. So that practicing this is not going to feel second nature to you. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. We probably all have had a friend, mm -hmm. friend with quotation marks, mm -hmm. who they're only our friend as long as we're giving something mm -hmm. to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So, and what you're talking about right there is faithful servant relationship. So they're in it. <clears throat> what, what, what they're pursuing is the what's in it for them. But they, it, there is a relationship, right? <laughs> Yes. And uh, um, go back to 60, section 60, um, let's see here. Third paragraph from the bottom. Oh, which page? Um, 60 takes over a couple So it would be 115, right? Okay. So, if these souls third, that, what's that? Yes. Mm -hmm. So go. Is it souls who? Climb? Yeah. If these souls do not give up. Okay. So go three lines down, and I'll start. I'll read it for you. And I will love them as my children, because with whatever I, I, I love, I am love. With that love, I will respond. Remember how we? That was the first sentence that we talked about at the beginning here about the way we desire and pursue. If you love me the way a servant loves a master, um, and I like to kind of use the term like uh, the way that a employee loves their boss, um, I as your master will give you what you have earned, I'll pay you, but I will not show myself to you. So even at this level of love, we're not seeing God. I'm not, God's not showing himself to us because God's revealing himself in proportion to our desire for him. And so, and, and where we are at. So if I'm at the faithful servant level, I'm serving God for what I get. I'm still not, I'm not at the place yet of <laughs> friendship where it's about our relationship and we're receiving, we're ex ex exchanging our, our intimacies with one another. It's just the relationship and friendship itself. Don't think, we can't skip over these. And there are different parts of our hearts that are still maybe at this stage. So I just think just of recent, like, and this pops up for me, um, that um, I go to prayer and, ex um, and experience uh, intimacy and consolation. And after a while, some months without, because I'm not sitting in my self of, cell of self-knowledge and I'm not reflecting upon the, what's motivating me here, it's like, I'm going to prayer for, uh, my appetite, desire, um, is going to, I want more of the consolation, <laughs> the consolation of God. And so it just happens automatically without much, I mean, if I'm not really doing some, any discernment, like it just, like, because we're geared towards pleasure. And so like, that's where, that's where it's going. And so I, I find myself, <clears throat> 
then um, with this all of a sudden awareness of like, whoa, wait, whoa, 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 wait. Like, why am I here? And I have found myself um, just within the last few weeks of a couple times of like, like a true movement inclination here that I didn't conjure up. Um, so I know it didn't originate for me, but I was full use of my freedom. Like, um, God, I don't want any credit for, I was doing some extra prayer. I don't want any credit for this extra prayer. Like, I, I mean, that's what I said in my, um, and it was my way. Cause like, I ser I mean, like I seriously didn't like, um, and my thought was like at the end of like, um, on judgment and, and then, or at the end of, you know, time that, you know, we think about like making sure we're doing, performing good works. We're going to be just like, um, I don't, I don't have any desire that this would be on, like, th take this away. Um, I just want to be here for you. And so like, that was super cool to experience that. Mm -hmm. And I was using my freedom, but I was all, and in the midst of that, I was thanking God for that. So I, so the the Holy Spirit was did I was was I using a formula to to work that out? No, the Holy Spirit was like I was seeing all these things. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so uh, so faithful. Um, if you love me the way a servant loves a master, I as your master will give you what you earn. Um, but I will not show myself to you for secrets are shared only with a friend who has become one with oneself. It's like, like, cause we're, we're used, we're used to, because of our fallen nature and where we're at in the spiritual life is like, <laughs> we're one with our own selves. We're not one, a true friendship is like, and if we could just experience a little bit of that being one with the other person, like um, the friend is another self. That's how I look and their values that they're good is, is my good mm -hmm. wow right mm -hmm. that's what friendship is and that's what god is calling us to and when, once we start and this is where grace is moving us towards and and once this happens this will move us into sonship mm -hmm. you know be be the love and the whole work of pur pur purgatory like this is <laughs> if you don't hit this you don't you're in hell <laughs> right and in purgatory it's a whole purification process moving moving interiorly through this at all parts of our person um i think that's about it it's gonna make, oh yeah remember john 15 15 again and then i'm going to end with this is from the liturgy the hours from um for today it's from saint cyril of jerusalem and i think it speaks well to friendship love characteristics of friendship love so we need we need to have clarity about what friendship love is right and so it can be attractive to us and maybe we can see some of our natural experiences or hear about other people and that would give us hope that this is possible right mm -hmm. then then i can take that and i have some understanding of what that means in a relationship with god right then i can start practicing <laughs> i can practicing thoughts and attitudes that correspond to the habit that i want to produce uh, okay All right, St. Cyril of Jerusalem. So we're talking about like the third century. St. Paul says, accept one another as Christ has accept, accepted you. Okay, for the glory of God. Now accepting one another means being willing to share one another's thoughts and feelings, bearing one another's burdens and preserving the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. Accept one another as Christ accepted you for the glory of God. Now accepting one another means being willing to share one another's thoughts and feelings, to share one another's thoughts and feelings, bearing one another's burdens. And so accept one another as Christ accepted you for the glory of God. So what's, what's the motive for doing this? The glory of God. Is it the fear of hell? Is it getting something in return? No, it's the glory of God. And what's the glory of God? Man and woman, fully alive. Fully alive of what? Fully alive of being divinized. And complete, you know, um, being completely in communion with God. 
And so what, some practices that we could do to do this, I can practice and choose to do this. Will it feel enjoyable? No, if I went and ran 16 miles, it may, it may not feel enjoyable, maybe for the first mile. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to really strive today, this person I meet, except to share, be listening, to share th their thoughts and, and their feelings and their burdens um, for the glory of God, for, out of love for God. I'm loving them. And so um, just a, we're, we're trying to do is like understand the framework, the concept, the layout, the anatomy, um, the path, the road, the map of the spiritual life. And then like, can we move into specific practices? And I think we've highlighted three or four different things that we could, we, we could be practicing. Uh, the cell of self-knowledge, um, um, just sitting in judgment over my thoughts, not judging myself, but sitting in judgment of these, desi these mo desires and motives, right? Um, bringing them into the light of faith. I could have a verse of scripture, right? Practicing the presence of God throughout the day. Um, <clears throat> then um, I could be also applying this to my behavior for the glory of God. What does a friend, friend do? Um, they're another self there. And so I'm sh I want to, because of that, it's like, they are me. And so I'm with that attitude, because out of love for God, that I'm sharing their thoughts and their, their, their sadnesses, right? Um, carrying, helping to carry their burden. All right. Immaculate Heart Mary. Pray, pray for us now and the hour of our death. Amen. 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 In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we'll be on number 64. <laughs> <laughs>